We have arrived at the very first major in the Champions Chess Tour. That means more prize money, bigger nerves, and more drama. We will be here every move of the way in the Everything's Masters to give you all the mouse slips, the time trouble, and all the genius moves. So, wherever you are in the world, welcome to the very first day of the Everything's Masters. Welcome to my humble abode. This time I'll be playing from Moscow, but here's where I live. And I just want to see how he's suffering. This is my usual work spot. Power. And he found it! Found it. And he found, found, found it! Oh, look at the bar! We need a very good mouse. There's the old mouse I use for all the other tournaments. It can be a little bit dark in here. I'll certainly try to be in killer mode from the get-go. For winning, the skilling open is not enough. I, I need some more. Everything's Masters is the second tournament in the Champions Chess Tour, but it is the first major. That means 12 players will be fighting out over the course of the next nine days. Now we have great chess players in the studio to help us understand everything that will be going on. Women's Grandmaster Ivan Kahowska and Grandmaster David Howell. And David, we're feeling festive and for many people it is the holidays. Can you think of any better way to spend the holidays than watching the best chess players in action? No, I've been looking forward to this for weeks already. I spent the whole of my Christmas getting excited about these games. I'm sure the players too, they spent their Christmases preparing um, and hopefully all the viewers at home. Um, I mean, you've chosen a good way to spend your Christmas, your mm. Boxing Day. Definitely. And Ivanka, the first major in the Champions Chester, what do you expect from the players now? Oh, we are going to be in for a treat. You know, I think the players will come out ready and fighting and we're going to see some splendid attacks. And also, I think on the flip side, we are going to see the players under a lot of pressure. It's going to be so much fun here in the studio. And also, I think for everyone at home and we want everyone to partake Definitely. in this fun and you can get involved in the conversation by tweeting us using the hashtag chess champs they will be shown on the screen and even perhaps read out on the show definitely so excited to have everyone join us on twitter and now uh Everything's Masters, we have nine days of chess ahead of yes. us. What will these nine days look like? Oh, they're gonna, it's going to be so, so, so good. I cannot stress enough. OK, so our 12 players will first of all play a preliminary event, which will be an 11 player, 11 round all player all. And then the top, only the top eight go on through to the knockout stages. So this will be two days of quarterfinals, semifinals. And then we get to the big one, Kaya, where the winner of the air thing Masters will walk away with $60,000 first prize and a golden ticket to the grand final in September. Exactly. So much at stake in the Everything's Masters. Now, David, we did get to know the time control in the first tournament. Rapid chess. Now, what does this mean? That's right. So rapid chess, the players will have 15 minutes on their clock for the whole game. If they run out of time, they lose. They will, however, gain 10 seconds after every move. So there's a bit of leeway, but when the clock ticks down, it will get exciting. As Yovanka mentioned, 12 players, they'll play each other once, so 11 rounds. And one point for a win, half a point for a draw. Only the top eight qualify, four players go home. Yeah. Four players go home after three days. Now, we did mention this is the second tournament in the Champions Chess Tour. In the first one, world champion Magnus Carlsen, of course, he was the big favorite. He did reach the final, but it was Wesley So who won the Skilling Open. We're going to see everything We're... hoovered off the board. We're going to see King versus King. King. And Wesley's done it, and you can see that fist And let's pump. look at Wesley So right now. He is the winner of the Skilling Open. I'm very happy and very pleased. I'm excited to play again. The last tournament was unexpected. I'm getting more and more used to the COVID lifestyle of uh, staying at home and playing online. Before the pandemic hit, I rarely played online chess. I didn't even have a good mouse. I didn't even have a large monitor. Look at Black's bishop, he's captured a pawn. Those two white rooks are attacked. Yeah. White has lost one of his rooks, Magnus Carlsen. I think he's going to give up any moment. Before this, really Hikaru and the Magnus were the big dogs in, in online chess. But in the last tournament, I managed to get lucky and beat both of them in one tournament. So that's really a big deal for, for my confidence. I'm in no way thrilled with the, the way that I, I, I played in that tournament. It was a massive struggle from, from start to finish. I'll certainly try to be in killer mode from the get-go. 
All right, Magnus Carlsen is in revenge mode, David. Do you think this was a big blow for him, not winning the Skilling Open? That's right. I think he's just so used to winning at this point. He's won everything there is to win and over again. Um, and um, I th yeah, I think it'll be a big blow to his ego. He'll want to put things right in this tournament. Mm. And let's uh, now take a look at the standings in the Champions Chess Store after that uh, very first uh, tournament. We do have Wesley So on the top here, Ivanka. Is, is that surprising in any way? Well, it was surprising because we all expected Magnus Carlsen to win. But, you know, Wesley So played brilliant chess and fully deserves that pole spot. But, of course, many, many of the top names of the world, you know, these are some of the world's best fighting, most uncompromising players. So I'm expecting that leaderboard to perhaps shift a little bit. We see Hikaru Nakamura, Yana Pomniachi in shared third there, David. Who do you think is most eager and most hungry to really fight to climb on this standings table? That's right, the two you mentioned, Nakamura, another born winner. He wants to win everything there is to win. Nepomniachi, he had a great break, actually, between the Skilling Open and this Air Things Masters. He managed to win the Russian Championship, so he will be on a high. He will be looking to push towards those top spots. All right, well, as this is a major, we have 12 players fighting in the Air Things Masters. Eight of them qualified from the Skilling Open. Now let's take a look at the eight top players in the Air Things Masters. Ian Napomniachtchi. Born in the same year as Magnus Carlsen, the Russian number one was ahead of the reigning world champ as a youngster. But he has since seen Carlsen forge on, despite building up an impressive plus four score against his rival. Winning the champion's chess tour is well within his grasp. Maxime Vachier Lagrave. The French number one from Lyon oozes style and sophistication in his play and is capable of beating anyone but he has had a succession of near misses in top events. Levon Aronian, Armenia's number one, has had a tough year, seeing the tragic death of his wife and his home country embroiled in war. But Aronian is back with positive energy. The famously laid-back Armenian is seen as the joker in the pack of world chess, a supremely creative player who can better anyone on his day. Wesley So the winner of the first tournament in the Champions Chess Tour. So hit world number two in 2016 and was talked about as the next big thing in chess and a potential world champion. He also had a stunning 67 game unbeaten streak, but since then hasn't quite lived up to the hype yet. Timur Rajabov, born in the same city as the great Garry Kasparov, Timur Rajabov burst onto the scene as a hugely exciting youngster. But as a rising star, he failed to live up to his promise and seemed to lose his attacking verve. Now 33, Rajabov, who has been badly affected this year by war in his home country, is firmly back on track. Hikaru Nakamura, the most obvious threat to Magnus Carlsen's crown. The American speed chess king took the world champion to a thrilling Armageddon playoff in the final of the Magnus Carlsen chess tour. Nakamura is the world's top blitz player with an incredible rating of 2,900. Anish Giri is somewhat harshly known for the amount of draws he racks up, but his chess is extremely solid, making him almost unbeatable. Like Grandmaster Arkadij Nadij once said, Beating Magnus Carlsen is easier than beating Anish Giri. Magnus Carlsen. The Norwegian king of chess has been called everything from the Justin Bieber of chess to the Mozart of chess. Carlsen has to fight for his reputation in every game. He has won everything, but lost the final in the first tournament in the Champions Chess Tour to Wesley So and will be eager for revenge. Magnus Carlsen, he is in revenge, in beast mode before the Air Things Masters. We do also have four wildcards, Ivanka, in this tournament. Now, who are these four that we should look out for? Oh, these are great, exciting players. You know, we have Alexander Grishuk, three-time Blitz World Champion. And we also have a Russian, Danny Dubov, very famous for his creative style. He's so aggressive. And then we have Pantala Harakrishna. He is missed attention. Give him a complicated position. He loves it. And of course, we have Dav David Anton, who was the big underdog who did amazingly well in the Skilling Open mm. last month. So these guys are super exciting. 
hitting super strong, no, definitely not to be underestimated. Mm, definitely. And David Anton, he did play the Skilling Open. Uh, he was knocked out in the preliminaries, but was voted back in by the viewers. And he will be competing in their Things Masters along with uh, these three others, other wild cards. David Anton, Spain's reigning champion, is a hugely popular figure in the chess world, known for being a nice guy and he did impress in the first Champions Chess Tour tournament. Alexander Grischuk. At 37, Grischuk is almost a veteran campaigner, but this three-time world blitz champion is not slowing down anytime soon. Daniil Dubov. The young Russian who announced himself on the elite stage by becoming world blitz champion in 2018 is one of the finest talents in chess. Pentala Hare Krishna. He won the World U10 Championship in 1996, became a Grandmaster at 15, and crowned his junior achievements in 2004 by becoming the first Indian player since Vishyanand to win the World Junior Championship. Hare Krishna, the last of the four wild cards, David. So many exciting players, 12 of the very strongest players in the world fighting in their things masters. That's right, I can't wait to get started. Those wild cards as well, I've battled them so many times, they're so good. They've all beaten me at some point in my <laughs> career. Um, yeah, and the clock's ticking, we're almost there, round one. Clock's ticking, you said it, David. And actually, we've been talking about the time control, of course, very interesting. But another thing that is so interesting with the Champions Chess Store, players playing at home all over the world. And that means also that the clock from where they're sitting is very interesting. Look at this map, I mean, Hikaru Nakamura. It's almost it's 6 a.m. in the morning for him. <laughs> that is insanely early, especially for a chess player. We're not used to play getting up so early, that's for starters. That's right, chess players are night owls, so I think that's going to be a huge handicap for Nakamura. And also Wesley So is not quite 8 a.m. for him, so it'll be fascinating to see how the players adapt. Who, who, who is this the best for, playing from home? Who, who should be comfortable with the clock here? Probably the guys in Europe, I'd reckon. I mean, it's afternoon for them. They've had time to wake up, shower, do a bit of preparation. Um, that being said, all of the players, they're very professional. They'll have, they'll have known this in advance and they'll have been setting their body clocks accordingly. And we do, we do notice Magnus Carlsen, the Norwegian, in the corner here. He's not placed in Norway. We don't know where he is. No, we certainly don't know where he is. But he has been very active on social media, posting beautiful pictures of mm. a tropical location. So wherever he is, he's having a good time. Yeah, it's definitely not Norway. It was snowing here today. Uh, yeah, send in your thoughts as well. I mean, I, I have no idea where he could be. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, definitely. Who do you think is at a disadvantage? And if you want to get involved in the conversation, please tweet us using the hashtag ChessChamps. Hashtag ChessChamps. Now, Magnus Carlsen, we, we don't know where he is sitting right now in the world, but he is in some sort of hotel room or something. And he is one of the players that we will follow in the very first round of the Air Things Masters. This is the game that we will start off with. It is world champion Magnus Carlsen against one of his big rivals. Levon Aronia and David, these two have met each other so many times. That's right, hundreds of times. I mean, in speed chess alone, in rapid and blitz chess, um, they've beaten each other more times than I can count. <laughs> I think uh, Magnus has said in interviews, uh, Levon Aronian, he's outplayed him more than anyone else in the world. So, a big battle ahead. And here we have the two players. They have arrived at the board. We see Magnus Carlsen sitting with the white pieces. Levon Aronian is going to be playing with the black pieces. It is about to start only one minute away from the get-go. Oh. Do you think the players are feeling now, <laughs> Yvonne? Well, Levon just left us for a few seconds here. He did just leave us. And uh, we, yeah, we see Magnus Carlsen getting in the zone, getting ready to click on that mouse and make those opening moves. He's certainly looking quite excited to be there. I'm just looking around, right? getting ready. I mean, I have to say, having played online chess, you do have to set yourself into the, into the mood because honestly, playing at home is a quite a little bit of unusual experience because you're at home, you know, you're sitting in your living room and then Time's up, get up there in front of the computer and exactly. get into chess mode. Exactly, and we and we do know they have to practice with this mouse, David. It, it is different than playing over the board chess, obviously. That's right. I mean, in the Skilling Open, the first event of the Champions Chess Tour last month, we saw in the first round, Magnus Carlsen had this horrible mouse slip. He just dropped his queen on the wrong square and had to immediately resign. So 
Um, definitely, I think the players, they will have been practicing and they will be very aware that they need to get in the flow. They need to make sure that the mind and the hand, they're... They're in sync. We definitely sync. also don't want something that we call, I, I actually call myself, trigger happy hand, which is where your hand makes the move before your brain has actually registered that... <laughs> <laughs> what you're happy. Yeah, so you don't want to trigger happy no, hand. No, you do not want to trigger happy hand. You have to take that moment just to go, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Mind, <laughs> then hand. <laughs> All right, well, we are seconds away from the start of the first major in the Champions Chess Tour, and we have started David. Magnus made his move. That's right, so Magnus Carlsen playing white. He's pushed a pawn forward in front of his queen. Um, yeah, very traditional opening here. Levon replying very quickly. Magnus develops his knight towards the center. Levon occupies the center with a pawn and now develops his bishop as black. We'll see a flurry of moves here. We're going to see some very quick play. This has transposed to a line of the Queen's Gambit. The Queen's Ooh. Gambit declined. Um, for some of you at home, you might have seen the Netflix series as well, the Queen's Gambit. This is that opening and both players will be very well prepared um, in this position. We should also mention as well the layout of the screen that you guys at home that you see in front of you. Just above the two players, is a small purple bar, and this bar will show what the computer thinks of the position, the rough evaluation. If it goes towards the left, if it goes towards Magnus Carlsen's side, it means that white is doing quite well. White is winning or has an advantage. If it goes towards the other way, um, yeah, then Levon. Levon is doing well, Levon yes. Will be doing well. And we um, will see big swings at some point. Yeah, we will definitely see that, and uh, especially as the clock starts ticking mm. down and uh, both players developing their pieces, because one of the goal in the opening is just to get your pieces developed. And then once you get that and then the king into safety, then the opening is officially over and then we reach to a stage called the middle game where players start hatching their plans. And we did see with that last move by uh, Levon Aronian, both Magnus has started thinking for the first time in the game and also <laughs> the bar swinging to his side. But, but 0.7 yeah. advantage for Magnus is not... It, we can't say he's winning yet. No, we can't say he's winning just yet, but I'm just uh, giggling a little bit mm -hmm. because I'm suddenly looking at the player's webcam. Um, well, Levon <laughs> started sitting back and started making some unusual gestures. So he seems to be very happy with his position and almost seems to saying. Right, this is my preparation, Magnus. What are you going to do? Mm. That's right. So maybe if we bring up the analysis board, we can explain what's been happening in this opening and why Magnus Carlsen is taking a pause here. We see that Black's last move was to develop this bishop. Um, this bishop has come out. Black's other bishop as well is doing a nasty thing that we call a pin. The white knight cannot move because the bishop, this black bishop has x-ray vision towards white's king. Now we see a couple of, well, very um, aggressive moves um, we see that white has brought his queen out to attack this bishop and black has defended it with his queen. We normally don't see the queens enter the game too early. The queens are the most valuable piece. So you want to keep her nice and safe in this early stage because every time she'll get, she gets attacked, she'll have to run away. Right. That being said, I think both players have developed very nicely and now it's about who can get their king to safety. Exactly, this early stage. exactly. So much tension in the position with these pins. Oh, and we have another attack. So uh, Magnus has... Knight on the rim. Yes, he has put this knight on the rim, which <laughs> is dim normally. <laughs> <laughs> but the knight is now attacking this bishop. So Lavorne has to do has to take a decision as to what to do with that bishop to move it forward, move it back, move it away. That's right. So that white knight... We said knights on the rim are dim, knights on the edge hedge. fall off, off the, the hedge. hedge yes. um, there's lots of rhymes, but normally that knight will not want to stay there. Actually, Levon, he's retreated his bishop. That bishop is protected by a couple of pawns. White's knight on the side of the board there, we see can actually still capture the bishop. But a bishop and a knight, they're both roughly worth three points. They're roughly um, similar pieces in terms of value, but they do completely different jobs. So that's always a really interesting trade. Um, personally, I love my bishops. I just love those long diagonals, um, especially when you have a pair of them together, controlling the light squares and the dark squares. So I like that transition for Magnus if he captures Black's bishop now. Yeah. But it's still very tense and the center is blocked. But you know, David, this is a new move. No one has allowed their bishop to be exchanged off. So yeah, we are entering wow. into completely new territory here. And here we have it on the board that uh, Knight has captured the bishop and we have a very very unbalanced position now. It's going to be all about the bishop being better than a knight. That's right. And 
maybe we can bring up the board again because I think there's a new factor in the position. Black's Rook on this side of the board has now been opened up. This is an open line. We've talked a bit about knights and bishops. Knights are very good at jumping around. Bishops are very good on their diagonals. But Rooks, they love open lines. Black's Rook might want to stay on that corner square now. And White's King will never feel safe if it edges towards this side because it will always be eyed up by the Black Rook. So I like what's just happened for Levon. Um, Oh, okay, we see that Magnus Carlsen's just pushed a pawn in front of um, his rook there, just keeping that pawn nice and safe, trying to block this black rook in the corner. Very tense stuff. Both players will now need to get their king to safety. But the problem is where? Um, it's not clear what. Um, could it actually happen? Could it actually happen that we we have a game where they don't castle? That's pos it is possible. It is, you know, that always carries an element of risk because mm. you really do want your king behind pawns and you want to get the rooks mobilized. So if you have your king in the center, it can be a bit of a nuisance, but it is entirely possible. If it's not safe to castle or to go to the wings, then okay, there's going to have to stay in the center and we are going to see a lot of very exciting chess. Nice. That's right. As long as the center is blocked, actually, in the middle of the board there, we see a couple of pawns, a white pawn, a black pawn in those central squares. As long as the center is blocked, the king is kind of safe in the middle, but it will never feel entirely safe until it's behind a wall of pawns. Mm. Um, that's why later, hopefully we'll see it, we'll explain it. If we do see it, we'll see one side castle. Perhaps they'll bring their king to safety behind some pawns. Uh, meanwhile, Magnus Carlsen just pushing a bishop towards the centre there. Mm -hmm. um, that's, I mean, just a very useful move. He wants to use all of his pieces. He wants to collect his rooks as well. Connecting the rooks yeah. um, often gives a lot more flexibility later in the game. Yeah, and Magnus as well, is, he's a, such a big fan of... Oh, before I dive into that, there is now maximum tension on the board because Levon has advanced the pawn to attack uh, Magnus' Carlsen's board. And not only that, he has a threat in the air. So it's super exciting. That's right, Ivanka. If we bring up the board, we can see the threat that Levon Aronian has created. And also, he's got more time than he started with. He's got more than 15 minutes. Ivanka mentioned it's a new position, but he's playing so quickly, he must have prepared. And this last move, Levon pushed his pawn forward. He's threatening to push it forward again, one square. If the pawn comes forward one square, it will attack the white queen, it will attack the white bishop, and that pawn will win a piece. Mm -hmm. Pawns are only worth one point if he wins a bishop for it worth three points, that's a huge material gain. And in reply, Magnus Carlsen launches a counter-attack. He pushes his pawn forward, attacking the black bishop. So this is very tense. Both sides creating threats now. Um, yeah, it'll be fascinating to see whether Levon Aronian, he's studied this, uh, this position beforehand. <laughs> it is Levon Aronian thinking. OK, we're very excited to see his next move. I can uh, quickly mention that in between the other games that is going on, we have uh, Hari Krishna facing uh, Vashe Lagrav, Daniel Dubov against Timur Rajabov. And then we have uh, David Anton versus the, the winner of the Skilling Open, Wesley So. And Anish Giri, he's facing Jan Poniaci. Very interesting game there. And then Alexander Grishak is playing against Hikaru Nakamura. So we will, of course, let you know what happens in those games as well, as we are waiting for Levon Oronian to make his move, if he will actually move this pawn. Yeah, that's right. Um, he could push that pawn forward. He could also... Uh, Black's bishop is now attacked, so that bishop could trade itself for a knight giving check to the White King. I think he will move that bishop. It's just, um, there are a couple of options and we expect him to spend a long time. Actually, one thing that my eye is drawn towards immediately is, you mentioned those other games, Kaya. At the bottom of the screen, below the players, we can see kind of updates on how the other games are going. And in the game, Giri against Nepomniachi, yeah. the bar, the arrow has gone all the way towards white side, towards <laughs> Anish Giri's side. So maybe we'll see an early result there soon. Wow. OK, we will definitely keep an eye on that. And as uh, Levon Ronian is uh, thinking, OK, what did he do? He didn't move the pawn. That's right. Not yet. Not yet. It's still very much in the air. In fact, he retreated the bishop. He wanted to preserve a bishop because, you know, one of the great imbalances in chess is like two bishops. Two bishops together are so good. They can control the whole board. And uh, Levon did not want to allow Magnus that. And so he decided to keep one of his bishops on the board. And still, there is that question. What? is Magnus going to do about the centre? What is he going to do with tension? So many options. Yeah, and talking of tension, those queens are actually looking at each other right now. Mm -hmm. We could be about to see a queen trade. Magnus Carlsen's queen, White's queen, is not defended right now. So he either has to move it, or he has to run away, or he has to trade queens. Magnus Carlsen, we saw it in the Skilling Open in the last tournament of the Champions Chess Tour. He's so good at his endgames. So normally trading queens, I think it's something he... 
he quite likes, and now we see the queens have disappeared. Wow, that was fast from too. The board. <laughs> that was very fast. Um, and actually, I think we saw something that we call a pre-move um, in internet chess. That means that with the mouse, you make the move beforehand in anticipation of your opponent's move. So for example, Levon Aronian, he would have clicked his bishop, he would have clicked his queen. Um, so assuming that Magnus took that, he'd make the move immediately. He wouldn't lose any time on the clock. Wow. So that's another difference with... OK, yes. so that's another thing you can actually practice before before these tournaments. Just clever, small things to just spare a little bit of time. Exactly. You can certainly save a lot of time, which is very, very important when it comes to a situation like the Armageddon, where no time is added on the clock. You do need to be a specialist in these pre-moves, but you've got to be very, very mm. careful because if you make the wrong pre-move, that's it. <laughs> you made a blunder of the worst proportions and it's game over. So actually, Levon Aronian here is showing both. He's clever, he's, he's done his preparation and he does feel confident. Yes, he, he's certainly looking confident. Look at his body posture on mm. the chair. He just looks completely in the zone. He knows this is preparation and uh, this is what he's been practicing. All right, well, Magnus Carlsen is now thinking, and we said so many times, Ivanka, we want to involve the viewers at home. We want them to join in on the fun here in the studio. And we do, I think you've prepared a quiz for them, haven't you? <laughs> we do have a quiz, yes. <laughs> and uh, the question, we do have a quiz, and mm -hmm. the prize will be a year's me premium membership of yes. Chess 24, which is absolutely amazing. And here is the quiz. So let me just uh, have to inch forward. <laughs> Who is the reigning World Fisher Random Champion? Yes. So, yeah, do we? any of us know the answer? I think I actually know the answer. But, I think uh, I do too. <laughs> no, you're not allowed to say, David. I know you, I know you like <laughs> showing one. off, but yes. you're not allowed to say. Yeah. So if you at home know the question, if, or if you're able to find out the question, then tweet us on the, on the hashtag ChessChamps with your answer. We will pick a winner within the end of today, and the win winner will get a one-year premium membership on Chess24. So... Please get into Twitter and uh, let us know if you know the answer. Who is the reigning Fisher Random World Champion? Yes. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that's, that's a great prize as well. Actually, I was asked by so many people who've kind of, they've only discovered chess recently. They've only just got into chess and they asked, you know, what should I, what should I get my friend, another chess player? Um, what should I get them for Christmas as a Christmas present? And I thought, what better than a Chess24 premium membership? You get to watch so many videos. Um, on demand, you get so many perks. And you can um, even yeah. challenge the top players. Because ah, like, the, the top players will come on, like Magnus Carlsen, where he'll be like doing banter blitz, where he's like, come on, play me. That's and oh, you can only challenge if you're a premium member. And wow. uh, where else in the world can you get the opportunity to play against the world champion? What you might lose. Sport? Yeah, what <laughs> in, other sport in, can you... yeah, in that any matter. sport. That's not even possible in any sport. No, I know. Chess is possible. And the world champion has made his move. What's happening, David? That's right. So we've seen not just the queens leave the board, but also a pair of pawns. White has, well, he's lost his central pawn in return. Um, I mean, it was a fair exchange, a pawn for a pawn. Black now, though, his knight has leaped forward. Black's knight is attacking a white bishop in the center here. Um, maybe if we bring the board up, we can just see, well, we've seen castling as well. Magnus <laughs> Carlsen, he's got his king to safety. Finally. <laughs> Finally. Um, 16 moves into the game. That's very late. Normally, for those of you at home, if you're new to chess, get your king to safety very quickly. And this is something Magnus Carlsen has just done on the last move. We saw white's king in the center here, white's rook. There's nothing between those two pieces. Neither piece has moved yet either. So therefore, white can castle. He brings his king two squares across. The king always moves two squares. If you want to castle the other way, the king moves two squares across as well and then the rook jumps over. So you activate two, well, you get your king to safety, this king will hide itself behind a white pawn, and you activate your rook at the same time. It's a bit, bit of a bonus move, a bit of a cheat move. You get to use two, uh, two pieces at the same time, and that's the only moment you can do it in the game. And as a bonus, Magnus Carlsen, he's using his rook now to defend this bishop, which was attacked by the black knight. Um, yeah, I, I like that move by Magnus. Um, we see that the bar slightly favors white as well. Mm -hmm. I think that white has a slightly better position just because his pieces are more ready for the action than blacks. Yeah, I agree with you, David. I'm really liking Magnus's position. And there's actually something very tangible in the air because normally what you want to do is you want to start planning. You want to put, you know, you want to think about what pieces to attack, what pieces to defend, what lines to possess. And here I think Magnus will be having his eyes on one pawn that is totally unsupported and it's all alone. Mm. So 
when you have such a pawn like that, they can be very strong, but they can also be very, very weak. And what I'm going to, what I'm expecting Magnus to do is basically play with a one-track mind, which is pile up everything on that pawn, mm. control it, make sure it can't run away, and uh, yep, then try and eat it, basically. That's right, <laughs> that black pawn in the centre. It looks so lonely, it wants to have another pawn <laughs> yeah. next to it. Um, <laughs> no, I think the battle will revolve around the centre, as it always does in chess, but especially around that pawn. And actually, just below the players, this time we see the computer evaluation. The Stockfish is one of the strongest um, analysis uh, engines out there, one of the strongest computer programs out there, and it does give white a small advantage. Um, that being said, black, if he moves his rook across now, um, he could also castle with his king, uh, just like Magnus Carlsen has done. Um, the, the advantage is manageable. I think black, his position is okay, it's solid, um, not too much going on right now, but the problem is this pawn in the centre of the board. Black, okay, black copies white. Um, when in doubt, copy your opponent. That's a good <laughs> trick. Um, and Levon Aronian also castles his king towards that left side of the board. Um, it's a bit symmetrical in terms of the kings, the rooks, but it's all going to revolve around the pieces in the middle. Will white's bishops be better than the black knights? Will that pawn drop off? Um, yeah, a lot to think about. Exactly, a lot to think about. And uh, yeah, I, I do think that Levon perhaps will be a little slightly uncomfortable because he's so he's such a traditional player. He really likes to have really good pawns. He likes to have his pieces well developed. It would be a little bit uncomfortable for him to have such a bad pawn that's all alone in the centre. But he has to offset that weakness in another way by either getting really good pieces mm -hmm. or and uh, finding good squares for those knights. And David really said that he has to start making those knights start jumping around, putting them in good posts, preferably on uh, the bottom half of the board, because I like to split the board in half. I like to have the bottom half belongs to white, the top half belongs to black, and uh, I think both sides should be quite possessive about their own halves, and any piece that comes in, <laughs> you kind of go, no, <laughs> kick, it <away. laughs> kick it away. And I think uh, I think Levon will try to make use of those two, those two knights and uh, try to find a post, preferably on the bottom half of the board. That's right, those four, first four ranks um, at the bottom there. White, white at the moment has good control. No black pieces have infiltrated into that half, but the black knights are edging further forward. And that's why maybe we saw Magnus Carlsen a moment ago, he leant back, he kind of flinched a bit. Um, he didn't look too happy. Maybe he's just trying to figure out how to keep as much tension as possible. There's a slight risk once queens leave the board that lots, lots more pieces, if they do get traded, the game will fizzle out to a draw. And Magnus, he said, beforehand, he wanted to enact killer mode. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and without the queens, that's very hard. It, he won't be going for checkmate. He'll just be going for a slong. Uh, slong? <laughs> long... Oh, I'm so excited about the game, I can't new, even talk. New word, He's going for a, a, new a word. long positional Slow grind. Slow and long slong. Uh, long, <coughs> a long strategic grind, ah, is what I always wanted to say. So but strong, then. A strong, long, long grind. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <coughs> anyway. Well, uh, it can't be that long, because he doesn't have all that much time on the clock. He has spent uh, quite a lot more time than Levon Aronian so far. Do you think uh, the world champion will get into some time trouble here? Uh, that's after right. Some he's, moves? he's five minutes down already. Yeah. And actually, uh, that's rare to see from Magnus Carlsen. He's normally quite quick, quite confident. That's a sign that he's not fully comf uh, comfortable with the position right now. He's not sure um, how he can create those winning chances, how he can kind of put that pressure on Levon Aronian. And Aronian playing so quick and confident. That being said, I have played Aronian many times before, and sometimes he does bluff. Ah. He's, uh, against me, he's, he plays very, very quickly. Sometimes they're not always the best moves, but he likes to put that psychological pressure on the opponent. And oh, we have a noise and a ding is telling us that the king has sidestepped. So a very interesting move. I wouldn't necessarily have expected that. I would have perhaps expected something to do with that rook that's on the right side that's not quite working, but yeah, interesting. That's right, so white, just with that last move, it doesn't look like the most ambitious move, but it's a very useful one to make. Just tucking that king into the corner, nice and safe. White's king will never be in trouble now, especially the queens uh, having left the board. Um, that being said, it's going to be all about whether white can activate that rook in the bottom right-hand corner that Yovanka mentioned. That rook at the moment is the only piece doing nothing um, for white. Meanwhile, black's rooks, black's knights, bishop, they all look quite nicely placed, um, quite centralised. The Black King, I'm very surprised actually that he did decide to copy Magnus on that last turn. The Black King can't copy White this time. The Black King can't shuffle mm. across one square because one of White's bishops um, covers its escape route. So 
Um, yeah, I think this yeah. will be Levon Aronian's first long think of the game. Okay. Well, Levon Aronian being one of the... He's not, the, he's not by any means old, but he's been in the chess game for a long time. One of the players in this tournament has been in the game for, for the longest, but, uh, but he looks quite confident with this online chess that we would think that the younger, newer players would be best at. Yeah, definitely. You know, he is very experienced at over-the-board chess. Uh, does it try... Whoops. <laughs> Whoops, <a> Daisy. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> so, yeah, you definitely... That, that doesn't necessarily mean that like, that will translate very well to online chess. Mm -hmm. But, of course, you know, he is showing it is possible to do these things. But I think a lot of it is to do with his chess experience. You know, he is so used to playing classical type of chess, you know, controlling the center. I've nicknamed him Mr. Center. Mm -hmm. And he could use that to kind of transfer onto online chess, where it isn't just about speed, it's also about getting good positions. But you do, because you do have to remember that he gets he does get extra 10 seconds per move. Mm. So if you calm your mind, you are able to just go and go, okay and use your experience. Mm. Yeah, and I think that the moment to spend time on the clock is when you're creating a new plan. These players, they'll be trying to think ahead now the next three or four moves, how to put their, how to place their pieces, which pieces to trade off, what they want to end up with um, at the end of the game. So that's why um, he's spending this time. That's why he will be thinking about the center and all his favorite things. All chess players, they have different tastes, different styles as well. Um, so it'll be fascinating to see. Um, what Levon comes up with and how Magnus will reply. Mm -hmm. um, I think Magnus still needs to kind of find his groove, find his rhythm. He will need to speed up very yeah. shortly. Actually, the more, you know, I'm looking at Magnus's move, it seems so innocuous just to shift the king one little square to the left. And now I'm thinking, you made this big point, David, that, the, that Levon's king cannot do the same. So there might be some danger that a rook could start looking at that black king and kind of mm. going, hmm. There are some threats there. So Levon has moved his knight, so he is directly attacking this light, this dark squared bishop that Magnus has. That's right. If we bring up the board, we can see why Levon played that move. We talked about in this last position, black's king. It cannot shuffle across one square. It cannot copy white because the bishop is covering um, that very important escape route for the black king. Therefore, uh, he brought his knight back, attacking that bishop, trying to trade it off. And Magnus has replied very, very quickly. He just moves his bishop forward one square, eyeing up the black knight, but also keeping up this x-ray, um, covering black's escape yeah. route with the king. White wants to shuffle his rook across next and eye up um, the black monarch. So, yeah, very nice move by Magnus Carlsen. He's speeding up. He's, um, he's finally trying to get in that groove. I think Levon, he needs to get rid of that bishop as soon as he can. And they are looking very focused and very, like, in the moment here uh, already. We can see them just so focused. <laughs> Yeah, we still do have to wonder, where is Magnus playing from? Oh. Any guesses? <laughs> well, somewhere with the beach. That's all we know, uh, judging from his Instagram. Somewhere on the beach. Yeah. That's right. And David, where do you think? Um, pfft, I have no idea. <laughs> I can't even remember what a warm country feels like. I've been in Norway for so long. Uh, <laughs> and actually, we do see a tweet there, um, a guess that Magnus is in Bora Bora. Ah. Yes. Oh, that's a good, that's a good choice. Okay. Yeah. Bora Bora. Yeah, we have a tweet from Michael McPaddy. It says, Michael Bora Bora. And uh, yeah, I'm thinking Mauritius. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you thinking? Uh, yeah, I have no idea. I... <laughs> 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 All right, well, wherever he is, we do have some moves. We, uh, what's happening? We do, and actually that... I highlighted the power of White's dark square bishop a moment ago, and that bishop has now left the board. Levon Aronian was able to trade his own bishop uh, for that very strong white piece. And we do see Black's King has also stepped forward, capturing that white bishop last move. And Magnus Carlsen, oh, he's such a calm player, he just drops his bishop back. Um, the white bishop has dropped back, opening up the line of that white rook. We mentioned that isolated pawn, that pawn in the middle of the board, social distancing from the rest of its other pieces. <laughs> um, that pawn is going to be the focal point of White's attack. White will use his bishop, use his rook, use his knight to try and attack that pawn a bit later on. Levon Aronian, he needs to keep that pawn protected. He needs, to, I mean, he might have to go passive. He might have to use all of his pieces to defend it, but it will revolve uh, the next few moves around that pawn. All right, the lonely pawn, Mr. Lonely. <laughs> it is nice in the center there though, but it doesn't help. 
if it's alone. Yeah, if it's alone, it, it really needs some support from a fellow pawn mm. because then Black doesn't have to worry. Whilst that pawn is all alone without any company, then it's going to be a big source of tension. So White will do everything they can to attack it and Black will have to, by default, do everything they can to defend. But why does it, it becomes... have to be a pawn defending it? Well, it's, it's to do with the fact that a, a, if... The, the pawn is like the lowest uh, value, it's only one point, so it doesn't really matter if a queen is attacking a defended pawn by, by a fellow pawn because the queen can attack everything she likes but she's never going to take that pawn mm. because she's never going to trade herself for a pawn that's worth one point. But whilst a pawn is all alone, then it's possible for that piece mm. to capture that pawn. And so therefore, it's just, just therefore, it's all alone, no company, and so therefore it does need to be continuously protected. And uh, this will always give the attacker the edge because you will feel like, okay, I'm putting pressure. And uh, it might be tricky for Levon just to kind of go passive and just try and hold the fort. Mm. That's right. I mean, pieces, especially Black's knights here, knights are such great pieces when they're attacking things, when they're jumping about, when they're causing trouble. You don't want those knights tied down to one square, defending just a mere pawn worth only one point. But at the moment, that's what they, they have to do. Black's knights, they won't be able to jump around. They have to take this defensive role. Um, that's why we normally want pawns protecting each other. Pawns, they can keep each other um, nicely, um, kind of lined up, these, they make these pretty patterns. The pieces, they should be doing the hard work, jumping around, yeah. trying to create threats, trying to create checkmate ideas. Yeah. Um, and maybe if we bring up the board, we can see Magnus Carlsen's plan over the next couple of moves. He's dropped his bishop back. Um, OK, we've mentioned the game will revolve around this pawn. He's dropped his bishop back with the last move. White is going to jump it forward in a moment, attacking this poor, um, this poor, poor pawn in the middle of the board. <laughs> um, White's knight at the moment and rook are already ganging up against it. One more piece might overwhelm um, the black yeah. army. Exactly. And uh, look at the clock. It has gone under five minutes. You, you told me, Ivanka, less than five minutes. Some yes. sort of clock goes off in your head. Yeah, and a, little, just... a little indicator goes off and you start to feel the heat. Yeah. And when you're under one minute, oh, that is when the tension rises. And uh, yeah, and seven seconds, we know that the brain goes out of the window. <laughs> <laughs> And then the trigger happy hand gets ready. <laughs> exactly. And whatever happens is just random. All right. Okay. Well, we did have a move by Levon Aronian. And after a few seconds here, the bar just shifted towards Magnus. What happened? Yeah, that's right. So Levon, there, he's pushed a pawn on the right side of the board. Um, he wants to keep pushing it. He wants to open up his rook in the corner. Um, that rook is on a semi-open line right now. And look at Stockfish now. The computer the only computer suggests hates one move. It. He just hates the move. I'm um, very curious. That's right, and actually Stockfish is just suggesting one move for White. Um, if we bring up the board, we can show what that move is. We, um, Does that mean that White only has one move here? There's not just one move, there's plenty of moves, but I think maybe only one move to get, keep the advantage and to make that sure that that advantage stays um, at a kind of very high rate. And has Magnus Carlsen played it? He hasn't played that move. White's it, idea should have been maybe to push this pawn forward, basically just preventing Black from opening up this line for the rook. Black wants to open up this line by pushing his pawn forward. White should prevent this plan, just uh, mm -hmm. pushing a pawn forward. It looks nice and calm. It's not obvious at all for a human, but um, I think it's always good to stop an opponent's kind of active plan. If you see what they're going to do, stopping it is a good idea. Instead, Magnus Carlsen brought his bishop forward, attacking this pawn, as we mentioned. Levon brought his king forward. That's very brave. Yes. Um, I was going to say, that's good. I have a nickname for this type of king. It's called a Spartan king, you know, named after Ooh. warriors of Spartan. But basically, that king should not be out there in the front because that is just way too dangerous. That looks scary. That, yeah. <laughs> okay. And then you can see Magnus has immediately lined up his rook to start staring down at the king. Oh, wow, we have some threats in the air, don't we, David? Yeah, that's right. And now, actually, the computer valuation, if we see Stockfish at the bottom there, it thinks that moving that black king, shuffling it across one square, that's the only way for black to actually pretty much not lose on the spot. There's only wow. one move now. Um, all other moves, we can see the other two suggestions. They give white an advantage of plus three or more. He did uh, find it. He has yes. found it. Yeah. That's right. So at the moment, the advantage, it says one point for white. That's 1.7. That's an advantage, but at the moment it's nothing concrete. It's not winning yet. Okay. Anything over three, over four, that starts to become very decisive. Um, so Aronian, he's on the defensive. Can he hold things together? Can Magnus Carlsen, can he find a way to turn that advantage into a material gain maybe? Can he grab a pawn? Um, can he get at the Black King? 
Well, the clock is ticking, so we know that with time pressure, everything can happen. And I will mention that two games in this first round have finished. Tari Krishna and Vashela Grava played the draw, and so has Anish Giri and Jan Pomniachi. Okay, I see the moves flourishing here. What's happening? That's right. So I think we have to bring up the analysis board. A lot has been happening. Just those last couple of moves. Black's king is in the middle of the board here. We <laughs> saw it shuffle across one square. White's knight came up and gave a check to that king. The king has to run, but instead of retreating to safety, Levon said, no, I'm not scared. I'm going to put my king in the middle of the board. Whoa. Um, that is a very brave Spartan king. I, actually, I'm obsessed with a kind of a game right now. It's called King of the Hill. And the whole point of the whole game is not to checkmate, it's to get your king to the middle of the board. Ah. And this king, it's... Um, well, maybe well, Levon would have won if they'd been playing that game. But <laughs> unfortunately, this is chess. This is chess, that's right. And will this king become the strongest piece on the board or will it just get checkmated? Um, we see Magnus Carlsen. He didn't really hesitate. He just grabbed a pawn here. White's knight is on the rim again. It's offside at the moment, but he has snatched a pawn. Black, meanwhile, is put, using his knight to try and create some threats, maybe to go for the white king, maybe also to just to go for this pawn. And wow, Magnus Carlsen has just ignored that. He's brought his knight back. Wow. I'm shocked by that last move. Um, he's just saying to Levon, okay, take that pawn. I dare you. Um, lots of stuff is going to happen there. Um, I think White's rook is about to enter the game as well. And Black's king it's might be in no man's land. Yeah, exactly. It's so, so risky to put the king out there in the middle of the board when you have two rooks and a knight and a bishop coming at you. I think it's just way too risky to even think about snatching that pawn. Um, yeah, because like you're right, completely right, the, the rook that's on the right side that's doing absolutely nothing will now start attacking that rook and uh, start menacing and creating some horrible, horrible threats against wow. <laughs> that. Uh, the black king. Yeah, I must admit one of the beauty, beautiful things about chess is, um, well, when you see a position like this and the king is stuck in the middle of the board, in places where it really should not be <laughs> going. <laughs> and uh, it's like the kind of like sadistic side where you just go, well, <laughs> this was of your own doing, isn't it? <laughs> or he's just feeling extremely confident today, Levon Rogan. Just... It might turn out to be a masterstroke. It might be it a moment may of be. genius. Yeah, it I may mean... be. You always hear about these uh, genius moves when you sacrifice the queen, obviously. Yeah. A very bad idea to sacrifice the king, but... Uh... <laughs> but then again, if white fails to checkmate that king, then that king is perfectly placed for the endgame. Um, yes. Kings are always really good in the centre of the board. If there's no chance of get them getting checkmated, they're just a very useful um, kind of attacking piece. So um, if, that, if that black king survives, it probably won't. But if it does survive, then... Um, Levon, yeah. who looked like a genius. And, and uh, Levon has moved, uh, he has moved now that pawn one up. Yeah, it's, it's a very, very sneaky move. I actually love this move that Levon has played because, yes, he's offering a second board, but he's just thinking along the same lines that David is saying. If he can exchange some pieces, then it's going to be a great game king that we're seeing there in the centre. And so that's all he wants. Give up a pawn, doesn't matter, and he's going to trade rooks. And then you can see that Magnus is just not playing ball. But, you know, the bard doesn't quite approve of uh, Magnus's. Yeah, that last choice by Magnus Carlsen, it's a very kind of passive move. It's just using that rook to defend a pawn. If we bring up the board, we can see Levon. He actually, well, this is a sacrifice. It wouldn't even have crossed my mind. This is how strong these players are. He's pushed the pawn forward. It looks like it's just giving up another pawn. But if white captured, we would have seen maybe a trade of rooks. Um, or more likely, Black's knight would have taken this pawn, attacking the white rook, attacking this pawn as well. Mm. Um, Black's knight suddenly looking really good. The king is now nice and safe. Nothing can attack it. Um, white doesn't have any pawns to give check to that king. Um, instead, Magnus Carlsen was forced to go on the defensive with his rook, defending this pawn, but rooks don't like to be passive. They don't like to be defending things. That last move by Levon, I think, was extremely clever. Um, and here we see his rook wow. Wow. jumping up the board. That, we call that a rook lift. Um, the rook might <laughs> oh, but leap across bar. later. Yeah, the bar though, I'm wondering, is there a, um, is there a tactical reason? Is there a kind of a concrete reason that might be bad? If that rook move, if there's no immediate punishment, then I think it's very useful. That rook is slightly more active than it used to be. It's up to Magnus now with only three minutes uh, and counting on his clock to try and find a way to get to that black king. It's all going to revolve around that, um, whether that king is a strength or weakness yeah. right now. And one of the great things about chess is, yes, the bar might be jumping and disliking the choices, but you have to remember these are two humans playing with all the psychological pressure 
<laughs> of two humans. And they'll be thinking, you know, I know Magnus will be thinking right now, oh, look at that rook, it just lifted up. Perhaps the other rook will come and join it and suddenly there will be pressure against my pawn. Hmm, how am I going to checkmate this uh, king that is there where it shouldn't be? And uh, again, that's going to take time and psychological burden. So I'm super fascinated by this position because tension is building up on the right side. Definitely. And, and both players now under three minutes. Magnus yeah. going down to two minutes on the clock now. It, it will get intense. And I will also mention that another game has ended in draw, the game between Daniel Dubo and Timur Rajabo. So we have three draws in this first round so far, David. This position between Magnus and Devon. Is it, is it a draw or is it going to be? Oh, no, I don't know. Anything is happening at the minute and uh, I'm loving Magnus's last move because, you know, we mentioned that there was a lot of tension on the right-hand side. Well, this is Magnus's attempt to clarify it. Now he's saying to Lavon, do something with that pawn. <laughs> I don't want it on my half anymore. And, uh, yeah, Lavon has to take a choice. That's right. Actually, black's only two pieces in white's half of the board. Is that knight in the centre? and also that black pawn. And with his last move, he's trying to kick both of them out of the position. Um, so that's a very strong idea by Magnus Carlsen. Black is probably forced to trade off a set of pawns now, and then he will have to retreat his knight. And retreating a knight when your king is in the center of the board, that knight, that black knight is keeping the king safe. It's not what Levon Aronian wants to do. I think at this point as well, he's only got two minutes on this clock with such a weak king. I, he just needs to think, okay, Survival. It's all about yeah. survival. If he can survive the next five, ten moves, he'll still have chances, but he can't let his clock tick down under one minute and he can't let White get at that king. Exactly. And uh, yeah, there you can see that Levon is desperate with his knight, trying to keep it as actively as possible, and Magnus moving his rook to the centre. And uh, there's been some manoeuvrings with the knight super quickly, actually. Yeah, both players very, playing very quickly there. And there is a saying that a knight is a king's best friend. Um, knights are great defenders of the king. So we see Levon, that's why he's placed both of his knights around his king. Those knights will keep that black king nice and safe in the center. Well, I say safe, <laughs> relatively safe. Um, that black king might have to retreat sooner or later. Meanwhile, black is attacking a pawn with his knight. Um, the onus is on Magnus Carlsen, actually. He needs to find a way to get to that king. It's not obvious to me at first. Um, also, we see the computer evaluation. It's not really sure, Stockfish. It gives White an advantage, but again, it's not a, quite a winning advantage. It's kind of more about the human perspective. It's not easy to play with White. Um, he needs to find a way to get his rooks coordinated. I would want to somehow line those rooks up together. Maybe not right now. Um, yeah. He steps his rook forward one square. Yeah, just he's protecting, just protecting one pawn. And uh, now, they, you know, the great thing about Magnus's position is there is a lot of harmony. Like, all the pieces are on the left side. They're, there's a very clear kind of aim. that They still want to get at that very weak pawn that Black has in the centre that's all alone. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Levon is just playing with his knights. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's a very sophisticated manoeuvre, that last one, that knight retreat. Um, Black is bringing his pieces back. I'm generally not a fan of retreating unless yeah. you have to, um, so I'm not a huge fan of that last move. That being said, Black's knights, they're coordinating very well. Between them, they cover a lot of central squares. Um, I think the reason Black played that last move is because the pawn we talked about, that isolated pawn in the middle, Black's weak pawn, needed extra defence. So, um, Levon forced to go on the defensive again. Magnus Carlsen, though, he's soon going to tick under one minute on the clock. And this is such a kind of difficult, unorthodox position. It's very hard to handle for both sides. Therefore, I'm, I'm starting to think, actually, the last few moves have gone in Levon Aronian's favour. Um, an extra minute on the clock and a very kind of nice centralised king ready for a race later. Yeah. Um, that... I think long term it might favour him. It's all about whether Magnus can find something short term. Yeah, and he's just gone under the one minute mark, which does mean that the panic is going to start creeping in and we might start seeing the ugly side of online chess when players just make random moves. Oh, OK. And uh, Magnus has offering a night trade and uh, Levon. Again, I'm really kind of very intrigued by Levon's cho choices. I wouldn't necessarily have predicted them myself. He has just reacted to that by pushing a pawn on the right side. That's right. Um, I mean, the players are ticking low on the clock here, but that um, I would love to bring up the board, but actually we do see a knight trade. And I, I just wanted to say, Levon's last move, pushing this pawn forward, stops White from ever getting to the Black King. He's preventing any checks. And we do see, after this move <laughs> was played, a set of knights leave the board. Um, White's rook has jumped into the enemy territory. It's jumped into the Black camp, attacking a pawn, attacking a knight. But after Black jumps forward with this knight, suddenly it's all 
I mean, anything can happen now. Yeah. Black is attacking the spawn, attacking the spawn. Both sides, they're losing all and their he's doing, pawns. He's doing it and uh, the pawn has advanced. Oh my God, we're going to see maximum tension. But what I like about Levon's position now is that he no longer has a very weak pawn in, this, in the centre. You know, look at them. They are nicely connected. And if you look at White's pawns, they're a little bit loose. Oh, but Magnus is really playing quickly. That's right. <laughs> playing and quickly wow. and, you know, I just love the way that he's playing quickly and putting Lavon under pressure because there is that psychological problem that White has these two lovely pawns on the left side. That's right. Those White's two pawns on the left side there, long term, they might become a factor, but they're not very advanced right now. No. If they get to the end of the board, they will become a new queen. At the moment, though, um, they're not kind of deciding no, the game. No, they're not deciding the game, um, but uh, definitely Lavon has to do something. So, oh. Yeah. Super uh, exciting. He said that end games can't be uh, tense. <laughs> <laughs> it might come down to a pawn race. Who can get their pawn to the end of the board first? And Black's pawns, they're slightly further advanced. They're slightly closer to the end of the board. Meanwhile, though, White is a pawn up, just temporarily. Mm -hmm. um, and Black will be going after White's remaining pawn on the right side there. Um, meanwhile, that Black King, it survived. That's the main thing for Levon. I think that'll be a huge kind of psychological victory for him. Um, Magnus leaning forward. Less yeah. than a minute on the Less, clock for the world champion. Yes, uh, the, the pressure is on. And uh, of course, there's, uh, the king is surviving and, and certainly thriving, actually. That's right. It's, looks nicely centralised. White is attacking that king now. White gives check with his rook. That king can retreat. Um, I think it should retreat to attack the white rook that's giving it check. Um, Levon Aronian still moving extremely fast. He's still got almost two minutes, almost double Magnus, uh, Magnus Carlsen's time on the clock. Magnus actually played five, six moves so quickly he gained a minute, um, but now he's back down, uh, mm -hmm. back down lower on time. And um, Levon, he's got a choice to make. He can retreat his king to two squares, to two dark squares, attacking that white rook. I think, though, there's not a huge difference. He should just move now. Uh, move first, think later. It's, it's all about speed right now. Yes, absolutely. It is going to be about speed. It's going to be about decision making. And uh, oh, the clock is ticking. So make a move. And it's actually a very difficult decision where to go with the king. You obviously want to attack the, the rook, but uh, do you go to the center, in which case you might be vulnerable to the other rook that white has, or do you just simply go to the other side, to the right side of the board, in which case the king might be cut off from the action? Difficult choices to make. That's right. I mean, a difficult choice for Levon Aronian, but he should not be spending more than half of his time on this one move. Mm. He should just retreat his king and try and work out what's going on a bit later on. Um, it's, this is the type of position, type of situation I've been in so many times. You've only got one minute on the clock. You just need to look two or three moves ahead. I think he's looking a bit too deep now, and he's, tick he's soon going to tick under 30 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> yeah, just uh, make a move, Levon. OK, so I would go to the right. Where would you go? I'd also... Yes, right is right. <laughs> um, Levon just seems like such a cool customer today. He's just, just under 30 cool. seconds. Under 20 seconds, seconds now. Under 20 seconds. Remember, seven seconds is when the brain goes out of... Oh, he has moved to the centre. I didn't quite like that. I was afraid that suddenly White would be able to use all the rooks. OK, so there's been some trades and, uh, yeah, we're going to see the, the immortal lines. It's a race. It's a race. <laughs> That's right. And um, the knight and the bishop have left the board. Black traded that beautiful knight in the centre. I didn't think he wanted to keep it, um, but he, yeah, unfortunately, he was forced to trade it off. And now we do see that Black's rooks, they were ganging up on this white pawn on the right side. Therefore, Magnus Carlsen just defends it nice and calmly. Magnus, he's banking on the fact he has an extra pawn. And those two pawns on the left side there, they are connected. Connected pawns are the best. They uh, can support each other running Exactly. Forward. They can just come up the board hand in hand <laughs> and uh, can be nicely supported by all the pieces. You know, absolutely, I'm loving Magnus's position. I mean, the only question for me now is whether this is enough to win. And I think it is. And 10 seconds for Levon Aronian. And that last move, he did find a good move. So it was time well spent. It was a good investment there. He brought his rook forward. And actually, if we look across the rank there, um, the black rook is stopping the white pawn on the left side from moving forward. Black's rook could just capture that pawn. Therefore, Magnus Carlsen decides, your king was active. It's time to activate my king. Yeah. Um, and white's king steps forward. And black <laughs> Black's is doing the same. The <laughs> but, you know, still with the presence of those two rooks on the board, I mean, the king still isn't very safe. You know, it, it can get caught in the action. Mm. Yeah, Levon is not letting his king have a very luxurious life in this game. <laughs> He's just uh, forced to join in on the action.
Yeah, we talked about relax relaxing over Christmas, and that King has not had a relaxing, <laughs> uh, relaxing first game. We thought he'd just ease into the action, but um, that Black King, um, yeah, I think at the moment, as White, I would just be trying to get those pawns running as quickly as possible. Um, Magnus Carlsen, meanwhile, he brings his rook forward. Those two white rooks now are ganging up on that pawn in the middle, the pawn that's been isolated and lonely for so long. That pawn, it looks quite likely to drop off. Um, okay, Levon, he blocks the attack of one of the white rooks. Um, but he's oh, shaking his head. He's oh, not happy. Um, oh, yeah. but he's missed it. Magnus missed Carlsen it. missed it. He could have won a rook in one move. He, um, we could have just... Oh, okay, anyway. <laughs> yeah, I think we have to bring up the board to show that moment. That was so dramatic. Um, in this position, um, Magnus Carlsen, he did miss an opportunity. Levon Aronian's last move, bringing the rook across one square. Magnus, the first thing we teach beginners, actually, the first thing we should always look for are checks and captures. He could have played this move, pushing his pawn forward, giving check to the Black King. Mm. It looks like a sacrifice. This pawn can be taken, but he's opened up a line against the undefended Black Rook. And, um, and this is what we mean by the, by the trigger happy hand, because I'm sure the hand just made the move, and then afterwards, I think I saw the slight shake from Magnus where he realised, oh. Wow, and we saw it on the bar as well. It was completely winning for Magnus, right. and then one move later... Mm -hmm. Missed it, it's a draw. Well, the bar is saying it's a draw. Can, can Magnus still win this game? It's very difficult. Now, White's king is at the bottom there. It's nice and safe, but it's not active. And now he's tucked his king away in the corner. Kings are such good pieces in the end game. Black is attacking with his rook, um, eyeing up one of White's pawns. And Black's king is now eyeing up the White rook. Black's king and rook are just fantastic pieces, better than the White counterparts. Therefore, despite the fact White's still a pawn ahead, I think Levon should be able to hold this game. He brings his king back. He's going to start pushing his pawn in the middle there. Yeah, so he's shaking his head though. Yeah, it's still not that easy, you know, because you know these connected past pawns. If they start mobilizing, that's it. White is going to win, and it's all going to be about you know these double connected past pawns that White has on the left and that center pawn that Black has that is completely unchallenged and is passed. I, I love the Norwegian expression for past pawns. Free. I always think free, free. free. <laughs> Freedom. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, this is so, so fascinating and yeah. super sharp. Yeah, that's right. And although the computer, so we see Stockfish there, it does give a tiny advantage for White. And it, seven seconds for Magnus. Oh, seconds. you know what happens in seven seconds. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he's advanced the king and now we can see that pawn fishing. And the White's rook is so passive. That's right. And I was going to say, as, as the computer does declare that the position is pretty much a draw, but there's definitely chances in human terms. Anything could happen. White pawns could start running free or that black pawn in the middle. We said it was weak for so long. It slowly started to advance now. And if white's pieces kind of can't break out of their defensive formation right now, then actually I think it's actually it's maybe easier to play with black, despite the fact ah. he's a pawn down. So very tricky situation. Magnus finally getting those pawns running. Yeah. And Levon attacks the White King. That is check at the moment. Yes. Very tense. I still can't believe he didn't see the move to win a rook. It's the type of thing Magnus would see, I think, nine time, 99 times out of 100. Um, this was just that one time he, he missed right, the Right, but this is the kind of, this is the thing, you know, so you, you're getting ready with the mouse to kind of make your response that you just don't think about the possibilities. Mm. And then I'm, I'm pretty sure he would have seen it like a split second later. Yeah, and... I mean, the viewers at home got to remember, these guys are human too. Grandmaster's blunder as well. And the reason Magnus didn't see it probably is he just thought, OK, Aronian's so strong. Subconsciously, he doesn't expect him to make a blunder. He doesn't expect him to lose a rook in one move. So he wasn't looking for the win. And now we see Black's king is entering the white half of the board, Ooh. trying to get those pawns, um, those white pawns. They're still connected, but that Black king is so strong. Mm. Um, attacking them right now. I think Black has a few moves. He could even trade off a set of pawns. Um, by pushing, there we go, there he's we go, pushed yeah. his pawn on the right side of the board. Those pawns have disappeared. Um, well, one of them has at least, and Black's rook now, it has a choice. Do you take that pawn um, just above it, or does it slide across and mm. capture another pawn? Wouldn't it be an advantage to take the one connected to the other pawn? Yeah, that, that's, that would be the instinct. Oh, okay, he but, was okay, <laughs> okay, this is something we didn't expect. Okay, so he has pushed his own pawn. I really think he would do that. And uh, now Magnus has just blocked the pawn with his king. But I still think, even though it was unexpected, it probably is just a draw. It is. Um, White, unfortunately, can't defend um, that pawn. Um, Black's king is about to capture that uh, pawn in front of it. 
right now. Um, okay, he gives a check first. The Black Rook will swing across in a moment and capture that pawn. Yeah. Unfortunately, one pawn is not enough um, in a rook endgame to win. Black's king is simply too active. Yeah, and he's, he's set the final trick, but of course, Levon doesn't has spotted that. And uh, now... We will see king versus king. Yeah. And a draw. Neither side has enough material left to check me. Yes. Wow, what a, what a thrilling game. Yeah, that was so tense. And <laughs> that one moment as well, just that huge blunder by, I mean, <laughs> mutual blindness. Both of them just, yeah. I'd love to interview the master. Just see whether they saw it uh, actually, or see whether they realised. You, you can just uh, see uh, Magnus. Uh, you can, one of the things they did tell us from the skilling open was that they did quickly check through the game just to make sure that they hadn't made any big blunders or anything. And I can think, see Magnus doing yeah. that right now. And I probably actually, he's going to dawn on, dawn yeah. on him that, oops. <laughs> <laughs> he had a win. Because we couldn't really see it on his face when the move was made that he, if he actually realised <laughs> I think this is the... maybe now is the moment <laughs> yeah. Magnus is going through the game. <laughs> and I think maybe this is the moment he realises he couldn't want to rook there. Maybe and... he's he, maybe he knows he was winning at some point. He's just trying to figure out when. He looks yeah. a bit confused. Like he maybe has that feeling at some point.